quality is not always a good thing. <clears throat> so it says Hobbes. Why? Uh, this is the idea that he starts with. <clears throat> that we're all basically equal. I mean, that, uh, equal in our capacities, our mental capacities, and our physical capacities. Sure, there's some outstanding people. But they are very few. Most of us... Uh, most of us are no better or no worse than anyone else when it comes to mental or physical capacities. And why is that a bad thing, that equality? Uh, because it makes us competitive. <clears throat> uh, from this equality of ability, he says, arises a quality of hope in the attaining of our ends. And therefore, if any two men desire the same thing, which nevertheless they cannot both enjoy, they become enemies and in the way to their goal. They endeavor to destroy or subdue one another. That's really the beginning of everything. This is human beings in the state of nature. You have to remember that. that chapter 13 of the natural condition of mankind as concerning their felicity and misery. We know what that word felicity means now, right? Uh, what are we like in the state of nature? The state of nature is the, the state uh, before there is a before there's a state, before there's government, before there's law, and before there's a state that can um, actually uh, enforce law, because Hobbes uh, doesn't think there's any law <clears throat> unless it can be enforced. And he characterizes that state of nature, therefore, as a time of war, a state of war, um, because uh, it's a time where there's no justice. Uh, it's, it says, hence it is manifest, hereby it is manifest that during the time men live without a common power to keep them all in awe, that are in that condition was called war, and such a war as is a war of every man against every man, the war of everyone against everyone else, the worst sort of situation. Uh, and he paints this picture here. Of what life is like in such condition there is no place for industry there's no this there's no that there's no civilization there's no peace there's no there's no happiness it's a kind of a hell uh the life of man solitary poor nasty brutish and short he is building up to something in this chapter this amazing chapter um, it is a chapter that precedes his political theory and it is uh, the chapter that sets up his idea of what the state has to be like. And that state has to be something that responds to the natural state of human beings, what they're naturally like, and what they're naturally like are basically beasts that know no law except their own self-preservation and self-gratification. So the kind of government that they need has to be something suited to that. And he kind of sets this up at the end, you know, for all the desires and passions that cause us to do terrible things to each other and cause conflict, some are actually benign, uh, some are actually positive. So he ends this chapter saying the passions that incline men to peace are a fear of death, desire of such things as are necessary to comfortable living and hope by their industry to obtain them. And reason suggests convenient articles of peace. Remember, state of nature is a state of war, so you need to have peace, a peace treaty to get out of that state of war. Uh, convenient articles of peace upon which men may be drawn to agreement. So there's a way out of this hell. There's a way out of this. It's through the creation of the Leviathan. Remember the artificial man, the artificial human being. It's our only hope, according to Hobbes.